Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. Setting up SSIS on your desktop involves several steps as there are many dependencies. Here are the main applications that need to be installed. We will cover four of them in this video. We have a previous video that shows how to install SSMS. First, we are going to download and install SQL Server. For this demo, we will be using 2019 to match with the version of Visual Studio that we will be using. We do this to avoid compatibility issues with these applications. Setting up with version 2022 should be very similar. To download version 2019, search for download SQL Server 2019 and select the link for the Evaluation Center. Then click on the EXE download link. When the download finishes, run the installation executable. We are selecting the custom installation type to show you what is available. You can change the download location where the temporary installation files will be stored. We keep the default value here. Note the download size is about 1.4 gigs. Click install. This will take a few minutes depending on your internet connection speed. When it is finished downloading and extracting, a screen will pop up showing several options. To learn more about the applications you can install and the requirements, read the links on the planning tab. Click on the installation tab. Select the top option for installing SQL Server. We are going to install the development version. This edition is free and has no expiration date. Click Next. Accept the terms and then click Next. This will check for any applications that need to be shut down to avoid a reboot after installing. Nothing shows up, so click Next. This is downloading, extracting, and installing setup files for the edition you selected. When it is finished, click Next. Another screen will pop up and show you any possible issues that may occur during the setup. We are not changing the firewall to allow external connections. That is an option for a future video on advanced topics. On the next screen, we want to select the database engine, integration services, and the SDKs, along with the paths to install the SQL Server application and data. You also see any prerequisites and the disk space that will be used. Click Next. This is where we name our instance and service. We already have one default instance installed previously, so that option is not available. We name ours MSSQL 2019. Click Next. Here we set up a few initial accounts and credentials. We select mixed mode so we can connect either using our Windows account or by providing a username and password. We set up our Windows account as administrators by clicking on Add Current User at the bottom. Click Next. Here is a summary of the selections we made. Double check them before running the installation. Everything looks fine, so we click on Uninstall. This will take a while. When it is finished, you should see this screen. We save the log file with installation results and click Close. Next, we click on the SQL Server Data Tools link. A web page pops up with instructions. The page says this software can be installed during the Visual Studio installation, so we go to the next step. Click on Visual Studio 2019. You see a list of requirements for installing. If you have a Visual Studio subscription, click on the Download Visual Studio link. Click Download and enter in your credentials for your subscription. Otherwise, we are going to show you how to download and install if you don't have a subscription. Search for Download Visual Studio 2019. You can add Community if you want that version. Open the link pointing to TechSpot and click on the Free Community Edition here. When the download finishes, run the VS Community Executable. This will take a few minutes to finish. When it is completed, a screen like this will pop up. Select Data Storage and Processing and verify that SSDT is selected on the right side. Select any other tools you might want and click Install. When this is finished, you should see the installer screen looking like this. Click on Modify to install or remove any components from the previous screen. Otherwise, click on the Launch button. Visual Studio 2019 will open. We skip the sign-in process and click on Not Now. You can change some settings here. We select a dark theme. Click on Start Visual Studio. When it opens, click on Create a New Project. Type in a name and location to store the project files and click Create. Now we are going to install Integration Services. Click on Extensions and select Manage Extensions at the top. 
Click on online and search for SSIS or integration in the upper right. Download the first item, SQL Server Integration Services. Then when it is finished, open the downloads folder and run the exe file. Select your language, then click OK. You're installing version 4.6. Click Next. Select the version of Visual Studio that you will want to use SSIS inside and click Install. You may need to stop some services or apps before you can continue, including the Visual Studio app. You can use Task Manager or Task List and Task Skill to close those down. Run Install again and wait for the process to finish. Click Close. Our installation is finished. Now, we are going to verify that the installation worked and create a simple task to make sure all the pieces are working correctly. Reopen your previous Visual Studio Project solution file and verify this extension is installed now. Click on Extensions and look under the Installed list. We can see the extension is installed now and can be disabled or uninstalled from here. Click Close. Go back and create a new project and select the Integration Services Project option this time. This will create the necessary framework we need to work on SSIS projects. Select the name and location again. You can save everything to the same directory if you prefer. Click Create. When the Create Project process finishes, you should see a package.dtsx file in design mode. Select Control Flow and drag an FTP task over to the window. Right-click and select Edit to modify this task. We will set up the FTP connection first. Select New Connection. Add the server name or IP address, enter our credentials, and then click on the Test Connection button to see if we have set this up correctly. Test was successful, so click on OK. Now we go to the File Transfer Properties tab and set up our operation to receive files. Then click OK. Next, we create a parameter or variable. Click on the small box on the upper right. We create a variable named local folder name. Scope is this package only. Change data type from int to string and set the value to our output folder. Make sure permissions are set for our user to access this directory. Go back to file transfer and set up the local path. Set this to true and select our variable from the drop down list. Set overwrite files to true, then set up our process to grab files ending in .csv in the root directory on the remote system. There is one file named temp.csv on the remote system. Click OK, and then click on Start to run this package. When the task is finished, if it runs successfully, you should see a debug output with zero errors mentioned. Check our destination folder, and we see the file there with a timestamp from one minute ago. The file contents look correct, so this means our SSIS job ran successfully. Now, we add a task to execute an SQL statement. We will create a new table and add the data from our CSV file. Drag the Execute SQL task over to the Control Flow form, then right-click and select Edit. In the Editor, create a new connection under the SQL Statement section. Here, we would see any connections we have already created. To create a new one, select New. Refresh will try to find any available servers. In our case, it didn't find anything. Type in the server name and select your authentication method. We choose SQL Server and enter the username and password. If you plan to run this automatically, select the Save My Password checkbox to avoid typing it in every time. Now we select the database name we created in an earlier video, Test SSIS, then click on Test Connection. The connection succeeded. Click OK. Click OK again. You should see your connection now. Click OK. Next, we add the SQL statement to create a table based on our CSV file. Click the three ellipses and enter in the SQL statement. Click OK. Then click OK again. Let's change the name to Create Table. Click OK. We want to test the SQL statement task only, so we disable the FTP task button. Right click on the task, then select Disable from the drop down menu. The task should turn gray to indicate it is disabled now. Click on the Start button at the top and wait for the job to finish. When it is finished, you should see a blue bar in the middle. Click here or hit the square stop button at the top. There are no errors in the debug output. We checked the database and now we can see the table we just created. It should be empty for now. To move the data from the CSV file to the database table, select a new data flow task and drag it over to the form. 
Right click and select edit. You should be in the second tab or data full form now with that tab selected. Go to other sources and select the flat file source, then drag it over. Rename it to CSV file and edit the task. Under connection manager, click new. We rename it to CSV file connection, then browse for our file below. Change.txt to .csv and select our temp.csv file, then hit open. The file name should be showing with the full path. In our case, the first column contains the headers, so we select that checkbox. Everything else looks okay. Select columns next. This looks like our data, click on advanced now. We can change the data types manually here or click on suggest types. We want to set age and income to one of the integer types, but we'll leave the string types to this selection. Now, click on preview. Looks fine, so click on okay. Click on okay again to get back to the form. We add an OLADB destination, connecting the flow using the arrows. This means when one task is finished, the other will start in serial mode. We also change the name to temp table. Click on edit. We add the same connection manager as we used earlier to create the table. This time, we will be inserting data into that table. Select the table, then click on mappings. This shows us the source column from the file and destination column from the table, and how they relate to each other. In our case, the names match, so it is easier for the task to find the relationships. Click OK. You can also change the name by clicking on it inside the task. We change it to employee table. We are finished with the data flow, so now we go back to the control flow tab or form. We only want to test the data flow task, so we disable the create table task and hit start again. When it is finished, we go back to the database and run a select statement on the table, and now we can see all five records were inserted. Normally, we would add more tasks if this was a production job. For example, we could run a store procedure to clean up and append this data into a permanent table using another execute SQL task. Okay, that's all we have for today. Thank you for watching our video. As always, questions and comments are welcome. See you next time.